In the first video of our series on exogenous, which are supplemented ketones, we looked at the effect ketone supplementation has on the blood sugar levels across 43 studies. The results were intriguing, but there were some caveats, some stipulations, some conditions that we need to address. While one of them was related to the long-term effects, another one was related to the ketone supplement itself. Some of them likely don't work nearly as well as others. So this part two of our series, we're going to answer which ketone type to invest and which one to avoid. So as I mentioned, there were 43 studies and they were grouped together into an analysis. However, the analysis included ketone esters as well as ketone salts. And the results were clearly in favor of one over the other. Ketones have a base structure that is defined by the double bonded oxygen. You don't need to actually know the structure, but it helps to know what defines a ketone so that we can distinguish between these two types of ketone supplements. The ketone ester comes with an additional oxygen and is similar to the one found in the body, the endogenous ketone like beta-hydroxybutyrate. However, the ketone salt has a literal salt attached to it, so a sodium atom is attached to the end of the ketone. Now, the advantage of the ketone salt is that it might be used more effectively in better tasting products. Now, comparing the two, functionally speaking, one had about a three times greater effect than the other, and that turns out to be the ketone monoester. It seems that ketone salts had weaker effects, and that extended to increasing ketones in the blood. Meanwhile, ketone esters significantly increased blood ketones, as well as had the most robust blood sugar reducing effects. That said, there were far more studies in the ketone esters, so it is possible there isn't enough data to come to a definitive conclusion. But as it stands, we have a clear winner. So ketones establish their effects on blood sugar through several mechanisms, one of which is through the stimulating pancreatic cells to release insulin, which is the common pathway by which the body reduces blood sugar levels. We actually see that evidenced here in another analysis performed by the researchers, showing a clear increase in insulin across the applicable studies. However, it's also believed that ketones have an insulin-independent pathway, such as inhibiting lipolysis in fat cells, thereby reducing the substrates for the liver to produce more glucose. Ultimately, there is more than one mechanism at play here, even more than the two that I mentioned. But some other related things that you might be interested in is how much of these exogenous ketones to take to get these effects. Is consuming more going to drop your blood sugar more? Those answers and more content on blood sugar can be found in my Physionic Insiders program. You'll get access to all of that content, uh, get a first look at my investigations, and join a community of like-minded people to ask questions and discuss. I hope to speak to you there. Thanks for watching.